हेलो हाय एवरीवन ऋषिकेश कौलेयर सो टुडे इज़ आवर थर्ड लाइव सेशन फॉर एस पी एम एम ट्रेनिंग ओके सो दिस इज़ आवर वेबसाइट एस एपी सर्टिफिकेशन हब डॉट कॉम सो यू कैन कम हियर वी विल बी एडिंग मल्टीपल कोर्सेज हियर ओके सम विल बी लाइव एंड सम ऑफ देम विल बी लाइक सेल्फ लर्निंग ओके सो हियर आई एम स्टार्टिंग विद द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक okay so first of all we have completed getting started with sap uh, all of these topics in our uh, first session then we have completed sap methodology and activate methodology and uh, documents which are required for implementation in our uh, second uh, uh, session so this is our third session which uh, we we are going to uh see enterprise structure and procure to pay cycle life cycle okay so fine uh, so any questions you can ch uh, ping in chat and uh, for any uh, if you want to join the training you can uh, uh, just go in the description of this video you can find my email and phone number you can connect me anywhere or you can connect me on linkedin uh, no problem um, so uh, okay this will be the last live session and uh, we will be uh, conducting our uh, remaining course with our students uh, offline okay offline means online but not live okay so now uh, we will come to the next topic which is enterprise structure okay so basically uh, first of all we will understand the enterprise structure uh, for a company okay so if you can see here uh, we have client company code plan storage location purchasing organization purchasing group so the first term client we will keep it aside for some time okay so we will start from company code so uh, now you must have seen multiple companies or you know like uh, automobile companies or any of the product which you are using okay you can just uh, take an example of uh, that particular company suppose it's uh, uh, like automobile tata motors okay so i'll just take an example of tata motors so uh, uh, it will relate you to understand the things in a better way okay so company code is something which is a legal entity okay so a legal entity can be 1 2 3 any number of legal entity uh, in one particular uh, company so first of all uh, there is one it's a hierarchy so you we can understand uh, the hierarchy first hierarchy will be company okay which is not written here but it will be company then company code then plant we will first understand these three so when i say company so company is something which is a group of companies it this term can will be used only in sap okay if we if you see uh, uh, industry wise so you will find company code okay uh, company code is called as company or company code like this so uh, company is some uh, uh, and it's a legal entity okay uh, suppose tata motors is a legal entity okay and then tata motors is having uh, multiple plants all over the country okay so tata motors uh, hierarchy wise tata motors will be the company at the top then there will be plants so plants suppose pune plant gujarat plant uh, and any state plant delhi plant suppose these are the pl three plants so these three plants are some somewhere uh, actual physical activities are performed okay so maybe it's a warehouse means they are keeping the vehicles that can be defined as a plant then uh, uh, it can be defined as a depot but you need to have a plant for that so plant then uh, you are doing a manufacturing you bring uh, the uh, like uh, all of the material from outside you manufacture it in the plant and then you assemble it and then you sell it okay so wherever you are doing all of these activities that is your plant okay so uh, there can be multiple plants under one company code okay then we will come to storage location now storage location comes under plant okay suppose you can understand if it is a uh, 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 suppose 1000 or uh, 10000 square feet 
of plant okay the area uh, not tata motors obviously this is a very small area so uh, 10000 square feet of area so there will be a entry gate to that particular plant okay suppose you are you are a plastic molding company okay so there will be a, a entry gate and there will be a exit gate okay so when you bring a raw you bring raw material okay so this whole 10000 square feet is defined as a plant uh, then you bring some raw material so okay so you are keeping it in the warehouse so you have three warehouses okay one placed uh, one placed at the gate itself then one is at the production line and then uh, uh, you have one more okay for raw materials to uh, keep it in stock somewhere so all of these three locations will be identified storage location one so uh, it is a four digit code in sap uh, suppose s001 s002 and s003 in this way okay now this storage location will help you to identify where is your material so when you uh, see in the system so you will uh, be able to see uh, okay in s001 i want to check what is the stock so you will be you, when you enter s001 you will find all the materials and its quantity okay but the thing is the physically we are keeping the stock there now how it is managed okay so the management is like uh, there is a person who is uh, responsible for a storage location usually for each storage location there will be one person or for three storage locations or two storage location there will be one person it depends on the company so whenever the material is going out of the storage location out of that warehouse so he is responsible to make the transfers to other warehouse or who is taking on his name okay so how to do the transfers and everything that is the sap part will come come on it okay we will be doing it later on but for understanding i am telling you whenever he is moving the material from one storage location to another storage location the person from s001 has to make the transfer that this material is going out of my storage location so this validates or this uh, keeps the monitoring or this uh, uh, actually keeps the stock accurate for each storage location okay so this is a storage location now storage location can there can be multiple storage locations so i just explained you about the raw material then uh, there will be for semi finished materials suppose your production line is like uh, you are uh, producing something at a like a, there is a production of four stages okay the when it completes the last stage it will be a finished product so uh, if suppose it is like when after completing three stages you are keeping it in a stock and then as and when required you are doing the fourth stage of production and then you are keeping it in the finished good warehouse so after the third stage you are keeping the material somewhere so you can it can be defined as a semi finished warehouse so after that whenever required suppose it depends like uh, some orders are received and then we are going to cut it in the as per the order okay uh, so for that we are keeping semi finished as it is whenever we receive the order with some parameters we will cut it in that particular parameter and then we will send it to that customer or uh, yeah so this is a semi finished warehouse then it uh, then there will be a finished warehouse one or two or three it depends on the area of company it depends on how big is your uh, how many production lines you have okay it depends on that uh, uh, i i believe you should always like to understand everything i am giving a visual uh, things uh, picture of this but if you get a chance you go to a small company maybe any 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 type of manufacturing company you can go you will get more understanding of what i am telling you okay but i am giving you a full picture then it is kept in the uh, finished goods warehouse and uh, once uh, the delivery date is confirmed or the delivery date is like suppose tomorrow or day after tomorrow then it is uh, dispatched so once it is dispatched it will go out from the exit uh, uh, gate 
okay then there will be other things okay that will come to when when we'll start more about the processes domestic and all then i'll uh, tell what things are done at the gate and all of these things okay no problem so there will be again a spare part warehouse okay there will be multiple or one spare part warehouse consumable warehouse uh, then uh, yeah all of these warehouses then packing material warehouse scrap warehouse so uh, warehouse you can say storage location so this is storage location so company code under that multiple plants under one plant multiple storage locations this is the whole structure now we will come to purchasing organization this was more about uh, the physical uh, location or area and the material where you are uh, storing it now purchasing organization purchasing organization uh, is uh, uh, organization you can say a team of people okay who are buying who will buy raw material spare parts and all of these things okay so um, uh, the purchasing organization can be assigned or it can be at a plant level means in plant there uh, there is a department purchasing department okay who is buying for that particular plant or if you have five plants so there can be a purchasing organization or purchasing department at as at a company level company code level means that particular department will buy for all five plants okay so it can be at both the levels the department at the plant level or at the company level company code level okay going forward when we come to sap you will i will make you understand with terms of sap and how is how is it okay after that we have purchasing group suppose there is one department okay and you have different groups one group is for raw material group is what like two people three people five people are buying raw material for your company or plant that is a group so this group will buy only raw materials okay so that we can define it as a raw material purchasing group or you can if it is only one person you can give his name as a purchasing group okay then uh, the other thing is like or you can identify it as a commodity you can write it as a raw material so raw material purchasing group there will be five people six people it can go uh, it can be more or less all of these things but they will be more responsible for raw material then spare parts then semi finished goods all of these things they can uh, the, there are multiple things to buy in a company okay so this is a purchasing group okay so i hope uh, you must have understood about this hierarchy okay this will come company code plant storage location purchasing group will purchasing organization will be at either at the company code level or plant level and purchasing group will be under that under purchasing organization you can understand in this way okay so now client what is so you must have understood this any question please uh, let me know in the chat now client what is client client is more about sap okay so you have understood this thing right the dev quality production okay so uh, what happens is i will show you okay this is your sap log log on screen so you can see here client so whenever you will enter your id user id and password above that you can see client so for a development it will be 100 it can be any number i'm i'm just giving you a standard numbering what everyone is following but uh, people can follow other numbers also so uh, for development it will be 100 then in the same dvc development quality production in the same development 100 will be for functional and 200 will be for technical guys technical is who are coding okay so in dvc itself development itself you have two clients okay when you enter the client 
you will find the configurations or the settings will be totally different so the configurations the master data the material code vendor code it is specific to client okay if you go from 100 client to 200 client you will not find anything similar okay just whenever you do some things in 100 you can move it to 200 in dvc okay dvc is development client so development quality production we have done this development quality production in previous our uh, session so anyone who is new you can just refer the previous session uh, it is uh, it is there on youtube so uh, so you then quality will have 500 client okay and then production will have suppose 550 or 600 client any number okay so this is uh, client so now every client what is the difference between two clients every client will have different configurations means can have different configurations master data transactional data transactional data is if you uh, try to uh, check if in quality there are two clients there can be any number of client in any of the system if quality there are two clients 500 and 550 so whatever purchase order you uh, have you will just post a purchase order in 500 you will create it and if you go in 550 you will not find it okay if you create a material in 500 if you go in 550 you will not find it you have to again create the material or transactional data in another client okay just the configurations can be moved from one to another okay mm, fine so you must have got the idea about the client it is purely sap specific okay fine in just a minute connected the headphone now maybe it is more audible to you now okay so enterprise structure you have understood okay now how to do an sap on all of the things we will uh, be going to that now procure to pay So if you can see this particular picture, so you'll get an idea or who has not worked on uh, the procurement part, okay, and the people who have worked, they already know this, like what is procure to pay. Now, uh, I will explain, like uh, procure to pay uh, will have all of the below transactions. The transaction means uh, there will be requirement, okay so how the procurement starts i want to buy something this is my requirement okay so any person from the raw material department uh, who is working uh, in the warehouse or who is uh, uh, the handling all of the spare parts so he will find okay uh, i'm not having bearings so i want to ask for bearings i want to uh, give a requirement so what he will do any system sap or any of the local systems whoever whatever is using they will go and they will uh, select the material or if they are not using the system they will just write it somewhere and they will or they will give it a mail that this particular part i want this many quantity this is my requirement okay so i'm whom i'm giving this requirement i don't know when the guy don't know whom from whom to buy so he is giving this requirement on mail or in system to the purchasing department okay so once the purchasing department will receive the requirement okay fine now what they will do if uh, it's uh, they have already bought this uh, some time back uh, or many times they have bought so they are knowing from whom to buy or they are having some contract with the guy who is uh, repeatedly uh, providing this uh, particular item okay they have made a contract with them so they can uh, directly make a, a purchase order uh, to that particular vendor or they will uh, if it's a new item or they want to find another find another vendor they will float a rfq request for quotation 
we are requesting for quotation for this particular item so what rfq is having rfq uh, normally purchase requisition have will have the material the technical specifications what for that material and uh, the quantity okay now uh, for in rfq again the material technical specifications the quantity and now uh, you will be asking uh, like what is the payment terms what is, what are the delivery uh, in co terms then uh, like what will be your delivery date in short what are the taxes this all things you will be asking to your vendor so once he will provide the data so uh, suppose you have uh, floated your uh, require uh, uh, rfq to uh, three vendors so all of them will give you the quotations like okay okay we will uh, we can provide you this will be our cost per item this will be our discount this will be our taxes we can provide by this date and payment terms are, are xyz okay so okay all of them have provided so you will take it you will just check compare all of three and then you will finalize one this is finalizing the quotation once the quotation is finalized okay fine you will uh, like uh, the order is created purchase order is created and it is given to him purchase order is the first document which actually goes uh, which is, which is a legal document legal bounding binding and it goes out of the company rfq you float rfq outside the company but it is not like you have to buy from him it's it's a ask please give me the quotation but once you issue the purchase order it will have multiple terms and conditions and it's a legal document if you are not buying if you uh, if you have uh, given a purchase order and uh, later on you tell okay we are not buying and maybe he has procured uh, to his place he has manufactured he can take you to court or he can escalate it at a higher level uh, legally and uh, you have to pay fine or you have to pay the actual amount something like this okay then once the material is ready what he will do is uh, what vendor will do is vendor will uh, inform you okay i am sending the material and he will send on the delivery date what he has committed or here and there whatever is your mutual understanding so once he will uh, send the material so uh, uh, again 10000 square feet the entry gate so it will come inside the entry gate while it is coming your person at the gate will check the invoice okay he will uh, whatever vendor has sent so that invoice and delivery note so as per delivery note he will check okay is the material uh, uh, the quantity is matching okay either it can happen uh, uh, once it is entered in the company at the gate or it can happen in the warehouse these things so uh, once the goods then goods receipt is okay fine we they have committed 100 they have sent 100 okay 100 goods receipt sent once the goods receipt is posted in the system or you are making a goods receipt it means you have to sign maybe it's a manual you have to sign i received the full quantity okay. after that the invoice what vendor has sent okay with the delivery note or he may send after uh, uh, after the delivery that will be sent to the finance department so finance department will check the goods receipt check the invoice check the quantity value as per po all of the things calculations and then it will release the payment as per the payment term to the vendor okay so this is procure to pay so from per requ requesting or requisition to the payment to vendor okay so uh, the like in mm you will see two things one is procure to pay and the other is inventory management so in procure to pay the basic thing is the same you are going to procure something there will be a requirement and you are going to pay to the vendor once it is delivered it can be service it can be material anything okay so procure to pay is very important to understand and uh, i think you must have got a very good understanding of this if not please let me know i can explain you again okay so what is purchase requisition okay so purchase requisition now we will come 
uh, understand more uh, with uh, considering that we are using a system. We are using SAP. What is purchase requisition? So purchase requisition is a requirement as I explained, but when you come to the system, the person has to enter, the user has to enter the uh, material which he wants, the quantity what he wants and all of the details regarding that, maybe technical details and at what date he is expecting, expected delivery date. So once he will enter this and uh, he saves it, it the purchase requisition will be created in the system okay so uh, what can happen is uh, many times uh, it happens like some particular part the uh, person who is requesting he knows from which vendor it is to be bought so he will also uh, mention the vendor number in the purchase requisition okay and he will send he will save it so after saving this it will go to approval okay some anyone can request anything if we buy everything so that will be a mess and it will be a, a lot of investment which is not required so a user is creating a requisition someone has to approve it above his hierarchy within his hierarchy so his manager will approve it okay we want it then maybe the department head will approve it okay we want it after two approvals the purchase requisition is approved and it is confirmed that okay three people has confirmed it now it will go to the purchasing department so purchasing department will be able to see in their report that this is a approved requisition and we have to take action on this so now purchase uh, purchasing team purchasing group or a particular person from the purchasing department will uh, take that particular requisition and then uh, he will see okay have we bought this before some time if not uh, okay uh, sorry we are on purchase requisition no problem so uh, the other way of uh, purchase requisition is like uh, there is a concept of mrp uh, material requirement planning so uh, whenever in PP module, uh, SAP PP module, they run uh, MRP. So it is like whatever requirements, uh, first they will enter the uh, uh, finished goods requirement. Okay. And on that basis, uh, they uh, on uh, this, they will run the MRP. And on that requirement, finished good requirement, system will check what quantity of raw materials is required to produce this raw uh, finished goods this raw material now system will also check whether we uh, do we have the raw material okay if we don't have the raw material system will automatically generate a purchase requisition we are going to understand this while we do the purchase requisition in sap in our next session next session we are starting with sap okay so pr purchase requisitions can be created automatically also one is manually entering it and the other is uh, with the help of mrp in pp module uh, mrp uh, it will generate the purchase requisitions automatically okay then it will go for approval and once it is approved the purchase uh, uh, purchaser can view it okay once the purchaser is able to see all of the require uh, requisitions okay so now purchase requisition is done so uh, what has happened is we have transparency and accountability who has ordered why he has ordered everything is there in our purchase requisition and we have transparency of okay he has ordered or uh, uh, his seniors has uh, 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 approved it okay it will be there for years so any problem in future any audit we know what uh, who ordered and uh, who approved then uh, reduce risk okay there is uh, risk of uh, fraud uh, risk of uh, having high inventory it will be reduced then uh, improved efficiency is like everything is in system and it is going step by step uh, uh, the uh, like uh, it is if 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 anyone sends you a mail 
he sends you five mails more five guys are sending five five mails so you may uh, uh, miss any one of the mail and you will he will remind you after two days and then you will understand okay it is uh, like, like i have not taken action so here it is your inbox sap inbox you will find okay i have not approved okay so this is the best thing now we'll come to quotations quotation uh, has uh, like uh, we already discussed about it quotation has the request for quotation which will go to the vendor we have to send it to the vendor so we will uh, refer the purchase requisition and create a request for quotation so from requisition all items are copied to quotation so you have to do almost nothing just few clicks and you can save it once it is saved you can print it send it on mail to your vendor so once uh, the sender uh, the vendor will give you the quotation you have to come and enter the quotation in the system why and also attach the mail or the document was vendor has sent it's a proof that okay whatever you are entering the system it is same what vendor has given once that is done the comparison will be done after comparison one of them will be selected and then uh, uh, the purchase request purchase order will be created so in request for quotation main things are uh, your quantity your delivery date payment terms and other information technical information and all of these things okay so once uh, a particular uh, quotation is approved okay now the purchaser can see view all of the approved uh, requisition all of the approved uh, quotations so he will select one of that and just create a purchase order and he will send it to the vendor now purchase order what purchase order has is purchase order mainly the buyer the vendor okay then uh, the date of delivery the finalized date of delivery when do you want the delivery payment terms once the delivery is done after how many days we will be paying you we will be paying immediately 30 days 90 days all of these things there are a number of not n number number of uh, payment terms then delivery terms okay uh, whether uh, uh, and yeah the most important is conditions like uh, discount then uh, if its item is of 100 then uh, there is a discount of 10 percent it becomes to 90 then uh, uh, vendor is saying okay freight is paid uh, to be paid by us we will go and pick the material so <coughs> freight is one of the condition so whatever is freight we have to mention the freight insurance these are optional conditions it depends on in quote terms what you have with your vendor what is in quote term don't worry we'll come on it okay so uh, once this is done purchase order will be created now uh, after uh, after the purchase order is created on the basis of the value it will select to which approval matrix it is to be sent and it will be sent this will be done by system once approval one two three number of approvals whatever once they approve then only you can print the pdf of that particular purchase order once it is once the pdf is available you can send it in to the mail to your vendor okay so purchase order you understood now goods receipt once the material he will be sending to us uh, when it will come to our entry entrance gate we will be receiving the material so while receiving there are few things which are checked first of all the person who is receiving he will check what uh, uh, the, the vendor usually provides invoice and delivery note the delivery note and invoice both will have the quantity what is there in that particular consign or that truck so you will check okay this quantity whether it is actually uh, there okay you will count it once it is counted then you will take it inside uh, and you will place it in your storage location and you will sign the delivery note that okay received and you will send the physical documents and you can also attach it to your uh, goods receipt which will be posted in sap 
and at the same time you can you will send these documents to the finance department so now the finance department will check the invoice the delivery note whether it is matching all the calculations as i told you payment terms and everything and then uh, uh, they will post the invoice verification okay i just not clicked on this goods receipt okay so it is basically more of a number like what quantity you are receiving okay supplier and all of these it comes from the purchase order while uh, uh, entering in the system otherwise you have you have to check the physical document also whether it is correct coming from the correct supplier and all of these things and once it is done uh, you will uh, uh, the invoice quantity value the purchase order quantity value terms uh, the goods receipt what is received it is checked by the uh, finance team and they will post it in the uh, sap okay then uh, approval is also there for invoicing uh, that can be also done okay so this is uh, i've given you some picture about uh, um, what happens in sap also but we have more understood the whole procurement process uh, procure to pay uh, like what happens in domain and what uh, how it relates to sap also now when we will actually do it in sap you will get more understanding of each and everything what we have discussed right now you can correlate all the process with sap okay so uh, we have planned these two subjects for today and uh, i think okay so uh, any questions you can uh, please uh, put it in the chat and from tomorrow uh, or from the next session we will be more uh, will more concentrate on sap uh, transaction reports and fury all of these things and we'll start to work on that okay learn that okay fine so uh, okay different client will have different data okay fine so uh, i think uh, there are no more questions here so we can close the session today and uh, if you like this was the last live if you want to join still you can join uh, please uh, contact me uh, for uh, more information thank you very much